Hello everyone. So far in this chapter, we have seen the definition of a subgroup and in the last lecture we also saw that two of the five properties that we have studied of a binary operation are inherited. So let's quickly recall. If I have a group G with respect to a, an op, a binary operation star and if H happens to be a subset of G in such a way that with respect to the same operation of G, this also becomes a group on its own. So if H is also a group by itself under the same operation as in G, then we say that H is a subgroup of G. So in the last lecture, I remarked that if I had to show by the definition that H is a subgroup, a lot of um, uh, work is involved and uh, namely, uh, I have to first check, make sure that H is a subset of G. Then I need to show that it becomes a group on its own with respect to the same operation. That means I need to verify closure, associative, identity and inverse properties for H. But we also discussed inherited properties at the end. I said that associative property is an inherited property. Inherited property means if the bigger set has that property, then every subset of it will automatically get that property. So the moment I say H is a subset of G, period, star, this operation has to be associative on G. So associative property is something that I get as a bonus by virtue of the fact that H is a subset of G, I know that the operation is associative on H. So this reduces my work by 25%. Now if I want to show that H is a subgroup of G, I don't have to worry about the associative property anymore. So what are the properties that are remaining? I need to prove that closure property is satisfied for H. I need to prove that identity lies inside H. And I need to prove that whenever I take an element in H, inverse of that element is also there in the set, in the same set. And that is precisely what is given in these three properties. Essentially, what we are saying in this theorem is that uh, we don't need to verify the associative property. Other than the associative property, you have to still verify the remaining three properties, namely closure property, uh, identity has to be there in H, and for every element in H, the inverse has to be there in H. Converse, of course, is going to be true. If H is a subgroup, then uh, H is going to be a group on its own. So obviously, closure property, identity and inverse properties are going to be satisfied for H. So the result works in both directions. H is a subgroup if and only if these three conditions are satisfied. This is also called as necessary and sufficient condition for a subset to be a subgroup. And this is the short form that we use for necessary and sufficient. So if I have a result in the form P if and only if Q, then it's a necessary and a sufficient condition. Okay. Uh, this theorem still involves verifying three properties, namely closure, uh, identity and inverse. In the next theorem, we will see how to reduce the number of conditions even further. So this is our second necessary and sufficient condition for a subset to be a subgroup. Let's see what the condition is. This theorem says... A non-empty subset H of a group G is a subgroup of G if and only if A into B inverse belongs to H for all elements A and B in H. So uh, this result will require proper proof. Uh, because it's an if and only if result, I'm going to break up the proof into two parts. Let us first of all assume that H is a subgroup of G. So in the first part, I assume that H is a subgroup of G and I need to prove that this condition will be satisfied for H. 
Now remember, if H is a subgroup of G, definition tells me that H is going to become a group on its own under the same operation as in G. And uh, now let me take any two elements in H. Remember, H is a group. So since B belongs to H, every element has its inverse in H. So B inverse also lies inside H. And now, I have these two elements, A and B inverse in H. And by closure property of H, their combination is also going to lie inside H. So if H is a subgroup of G for any two elements of H, this condition is definitely satisfied. Now let's look at the converse. So let us suppose that H is a subset of G. H is non-empty and H satisfies this condition. What condition? If two elements lie inside H, then first element into inverse of the second again lies inside H. So suppose H is a non-empty subset of G for which this condition is satisfied. Now I wish to prove that H is a subgroup of G. And for this, I need to prove that H becomes a group on its own. Now, if I have to show that H is a group by itself, remember I need to check closure, associative, identity as well as inverse properties. However, as we have discussed earlier, because G is a group, associative property is there in G and therefore automatically every subset of G also inherits the associative property. So I don't need to worry about the associative property at all. The only properties that I need to check for H are closure, identity as well as the inverse property. So I may not be proving the three properties in the same order. Let me see how it goes. Uh, always in a statement, uh, try and look for uh, using every little bit of information that is given because generally a theorem is always given to you in a finished form. It's a very polished uh, form that finally reaches the student. So um, each and every piece of information as far as possible should be used somewhere or the other. So let me first begin with this. I know that H is not empty. So because H is not empty, there is going to be at least one element in H. Of course, I do not know what that element is. I am simply calling it as A. So because H is not empty, there is at least one element inside H. Now, there is no harm in saying that A as well as A belong to H. These two elements lie inside H. Nowhere have we said that A and B should be different. So, these two elements lie inside H and remember what kind of condition this set satisfies. If two elements lie inside H, do not think of it in terms of A and B. If two elements lie inside H, first into inverse of the second will also lie inside H. So because of that, first element into inverse of the second is going to lie inside H and that means identity is going to lie inside H. So firstly, we established the fact that identity is surely there inside H. Now we are left with closure and inverse properties. So let me look at uh, inverse property. So let us take any element, say X in H. My aim is to prove that X inverse is also inside H. But now remember we have already proved that identity is there inside H. So since it's a matter of cleverly choosing your two elements. So identity as well as X lies inside H. Use this condition. First element into inverse of the second element has to lie inside H because it satisfies this condition. And identity times any element is that element. So that means X inverse lies inside H. 
So there we go. We have proved identity is there inside H. We have proved that for every element in H, the inverse is there. So the only property that is left is closure property. So now let us take. Notice that uh, I have proved it in this particular order because to prove that inverse lies in H, I needed the identity to be in H. So I first established that identity is there in H. Now let's finally come to the closure property. So take any two elements of H. We will prove that their product lies inside H. Okay. So firstly, remember I proved the inverse property. So since B is in H, B inverse is also in H. And now the situation is, I have A inside H. I also have B inverse inside H. And remember this condition. If two elements lie inside H, first into inverse of the second. First into inverse of the second is going to lie inside H. That's what I said. It's a matter of a clever selection of the two elements. And B inverse inverse as we have proved in chapter 1. Inverse of the inverse is the same element. And so finally we arrive at the conclusion that A into B belongs to H. That means closure property is satisfied. Notice that in order to prove this property, I needed inverses to lie inside H. And therefore before this, I had to prove the inverse property. That's why I have proved it in this particular manner. So all properties are uh, satisfied and therefore H will be a subgroup of G. Uh, if you compare this theorem with the previous theorem, in the previous theorem, we had to verify three conditions. How many conditions do you think we have to check here? Okay. It may look like we have to check only one condition, but remember there is a hidden condition. We have to make sure that the set under discussion is non-empty. So this is like a hidden condition. So if you are using theorem 2 to verify that something is a uh, subgroup, please make sure that you don't check only this condition. You also make sure that the set is non-empty. And in order to show that a set is non-empty, uh, ultimate goal is to prove that this is a subgroup means a group on its own. So what I would like to do is to prove that identity lies inside H. Because that will mean that the most important element lies inside H and simultaneously we will also have established that H is non-empty. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. So remember you still have to prove two conditions even if you use theorem 2. One is uh, you have to prove that identity lies inside H. That will also make sure that H is not empty and you prove this condition for H. This is kind of a, a mixed condition. It combines the two conditions of closure property and the inverse property. In the next lecture, I have some more comments to make about the necessary and sufficient condition. And then we will move on to the examples of subgroups. Thank you.